Hello and welcome to video lecture series in political science. Today we are going to discuss chapter 5 titled as Contemporary South Asia from your class 12th textbook Contemporary World Politics. Now as you know that for understanding we have divided this chapter into 6 parts. So far in the first 4 parts we have discussed about the formation of SARC as a regional organization. We discussed about the objectives of SARC, the principles of SARC and also discussed about the various areas where the member states of SARC are coming together to cooperate with each other. But we also realized that SARC has not been a very effective or successful regional organization as compared to other regional organizations such as the European Union one for one example. Now this requires understanding history of South Asian nations and their relationship with each other. In the journey we have discussed so far the relationship of India with Bhutan, Nepal, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Today we will discuss relationship between India and the Maldives and we will also begin understanding about one of our neighbors Pakistan. But for the beginning let us start with the Maldives. Now the Maldives officially the Republic of the Maldives is also referred to as Maldive Islands. It is an island nation in the Indian Ocean and Arabian Sea area. The name Maldives is derived from Sanskrit word having two parts Mala which means the garland and Dweep which means the island and together this Mala and Dweep that is garland and island makes it the Maldives. As you can see in the picture the island looks like a garland. The Maldives is the smallest country in South Asia both in terms of population and land area and you will be surprised to know its total area is less than 300 square kilometers and it stands to only 298 square kilometer and as per the estimates of 2012 the population of Maldives is around three and a half lakhs only. As you can see in the map the island nation is located in the southwestern part of Indian Ocean and southern, southern part of India. Maldives was a sultanate for a long period of time since the 12th century but it became a British protectorate in 1887. What is a protectorate? A protectorate is defined as an autonomous territory that is protected diplomatically or militarily against third party by a stronger state or entity. So Maldives become a protectorate of British Empire in the year 1887. Maldives gained independence in 1965 and it became a republic in the year 1968, three years after its independence. And India was first among all the countries to recognize Maldives after its independence in 1965. In 1968, Maldives became a representative democratic republic headed by the president. In 1968 only, a referendum approved a constitution and Maldives became a republic with executive, legislative and judicial branches of the government. Ibrahim Nasir became the first president and later followed by Gayoum. Now interestingly Gayoum we need to know more about President Maumoon Abdul Gayoum because Gayoum dominated the political scene of Maldives for over 30 years. President Gayoum got elected six times successively by a single party referendum but there were widespread protests against the government and the style of functioning held by Gayoum. As a result of political demonstrations in August 2003 in the capital city of Mali, President Gayoum and his government pledged to initiate or start process of liberalization and bring democratic reforms including making a more representative political system and expanding the political freedom for people. But the progress or speed of many of the reforms that were promised by the government to change the system were slow and it led to anxiety among people. In the due course of time political parties were also legalized by year 2005. 
in June 2008, a constituent assembly called as Special Majlis finalized a new constitution which was ratified by the president in the month of August in 2008. The first ever presidential elections in Maldives under a multi-candidate and multi-party system were held in the month of October 2008. Remember before this, there were single party referendums in which Gayum continued to become president one after another term for consecutively six times. In this election, Gayum was defeated in a runoff poll by Muhammad Nasheed. He was a political activist who had been jailed several years earlier by the former regime. And here you can see in the picture Muhammad Nasheed. Now, Nasheed got elected in year 2008 in country's first democratic presidential elections. President Nasheed faced a number of challenges, including a need to strengthen democracy, the problem of economic development, combating poverty, and many other social problems like drug abuse, etc. In the month of February 2012, Nasheed had to resign after there was a widespread protest running for weeks because Nasheed has sacked a top judge. Now, why did he sack it? Nasheed resigned after mass protest organized by the opposition groups against his decision to sack Justice Abdullah Muhammad, the head of the criminal court on January 16th. Nasheed had ordered Muhammad to be arrested by the military. Why did he order the military to arrest him? Because he did not investigate past corruption and human rights cases against the members of the former government, which was headed by Gayum. Later, Nasheed had to resign from the post of the president. Nasheed handed over power to Vice President Mohammad Wahid Hassan Maniko. In the middle of 2012, a commission of national inquiry was set up by the government to probe events leading to Nasheed's resignation. Though the commission found no evidence of a coup, the report recommended that the need to strengthen the country's democratic institutions to avoid any such emergency in future must be taken care of. Now, Apart from this, the officials from Maldives have played a prominent role in the international climate change discussions because Maldives is an island nation and due to low elevation, there is a threat from sea level rise due to global warming. Officials from Maldives have also been very active on the UN Human Rights Council, United Nations Human Rights Council and in many other international forums and they have been working well in encouraging regional cooperation among various countries, particularly between India and Pakistan. If we look at the relationship between India and the Maldives, the relationship between the two nations is close, cordial and multidimensional in nature. India and Maldives share ethnic, linguistic, cultural, religious and commercial links with each other. Both the countries have consistently supported each other in multilateral forums such as the United Nations, the Commonwealth, the NAM and the SARC. India offers immense assistance to Maldives for the process of development. India and Maldives have signed a comprehensive trade agreement in the year 1981. And the total trade between the two nations is close to 7.10 billion rupees per year. And it has been consistently rising. In fact, in the year 2007, the total trade between the two was 3.77 billion only. But it has almost doubled in the last 7-8 years. Relations between the two countries have been friendly and very close in the matters of economic and military cooperation and strategic issues as well. You will be surprised to know the State Bank of India has contributed more than 500 million US dollar to foster the economic expansion of the Maldives region. In November 1988, when some Tamil mercenaries had attacked Maldives, the Indian government responded quickly to help the people. Indian Air Force and Navy swung into action and reacted quickly to stop the attack by Tamil mercenaries. India has contributed towards the development of island nation in a massive way. It has helped Maldives in promotion of tourism, education sector, fisheries and infrastructure. Now this is about relationship between India and Maldives in brief. 
Now let us turn towards northwest and discuss our relationship with yet another but a very significant neighbor in our north which is Pakistan. We all know about Pakistan and we know that what kind of relationship India shares with Pakistan. In this part of the chapter we will discuss about the process and struggle of establishing democracy in Pakistan and what are the particular areas where India and Pakistan cooperate with each other and what are the areas where the two countries have conflict or strained relationships with each other. Because the relationship between India and Pakistan has been the deciding factor in the politics in South Asia, in Asian region and even at the global level to some extent. Now let's begin understanding the nation first and then the relationship between the nation that is Pakistan and India. Pakistan officially also known as Islamic Republic of Pakistan is a sovereign country in South Asia. Pakistan is the 36th largest country in the world in terms of area. Pakistan came into existence in 1947 as an independent nation after partition of India into two territories India and Pakistan and the territory of Pakistan was further divided into East and West Pakistan marked for the Muslims from the regions in the East and West of Indian subcontinent where there was a Muslim majority among population. If you look at this map, Pakistan falls on the west side of India that is northwest side of India which is shown blue in color and if you take a look carefully Bangladesh which is on the east side of India which is landlocked from three sides of Indian territory is shown in yellow color. Now Bangladesh prior to 1971 was part of Pakistan and it was known as East Pakistan and Bangladesh gained an independence in the year 1971. Now this is a detailed map of a political map of Pakistan showing the major cities and the capital city of Islamabad. The territory that now constitutes Pakistan was home for many ancient cultures and empires and civilizations. These are as ancient as Neolithic and the Bronze Age, Indus Valley Civilization. Many kingdoms ruled this territory including the Mauryan Empire, the Mughal Empire, the British and many other well-known empires. Pakistan is surrounded by India on the east side and Afghanistan on the west side. The coastal line in the south of Pakistan touches the Arabian Sea. Pakistan occupies a geopolitically important location at the crossroads of South Asia and the Middle East and the Central Asia. As per the estimates made in the year 2013, with 182.1 million people, Pakistan is the sixth most populist country in the world. Pakistan is a Muslim majority country. The population comprises of several ethnic groups and linguistic communities that have a rich history and culture. Urdu is the national language understood by majority of people in Pakistan. However, more than 60 language are, languages are spoken including a large number of provincial languages. Let us look at some of the important languages. These are Punjabi. Pashto is the provincial language of Khaibar Pakhtunwa. Sindhi is the provincial language of Sindh and Balochi is dominant in Balochistan. English is the official language used in official business. It is used in government departments and for legal contracts. So this is in brief about Pakistan. But what has been the nature of its politics? What has been the status of democracy? How far democracy has been stable and peaceful? We will discuss about all these issues in the next and concluding part of this chapter. So to conclude, let's summarize what we discussed in this part of the chapter. Today we discussed about the nature of politics in the island nation of the Maldives. We discussed about its struggle for establishment of democracy. We discussed about the recent political controversies and the relationship between India and the Maldives. Towards the end of this episode, we have started our discussion about our neighbor Pakistan. So far, we have discussed about the demographic and the geographical location of Pakistan. 
In the next part, the concluding part of this chapter, we'll discuss about the journey of democracy in Pakistan and the relationship between India and Pakistan in detail, including areas of cooperation and sources of conflict between the two. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you.